This video explains how to count the NAN values in the rows and columns of a pandas data frame using the Python programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the Python code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create in the first line of code. So as a first step, we need to import the pandas library, as you can see in the first line of code. And then we have to use the data frame constructor to create some example data. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame called data is created. And then we are using the print function to print this data frame below the code box. So as you can see, our data frame contains six rows and the three columns x1, x2 and x3. And as you can see, some of the cells in this data frame contain NAN values. Now let's assume that we want to count the NAN values by columns in our data frame. Then we can apply the code that you can see in the third code box. So in this line of code, I'm specifying the name of our data frame, and then I'm applying the isNA function and the sum function. And then I'm also using the print function to print the output of this code below the code box. So as you can see, after running this line of code, a new output is returned. And this output shows the count of NAN values in each column. So in our specific example, the column X1 contains two NAN values. The column X2 contains only one NAN value. And the column X3 does not contain any NAN values. So in this example, I have explained how to count the NAN values in all columns of a data frame. However, it's also possible to count the NAN values in only one column of a data frame. And this is what I'm doing in the next line of code. So in this line of code, I'm using basically the same syntax as in the previous example. However, this time I'm also specifying that I want to extract the values of the column x1 before applying the isNA and sum functions. So after running this line of code, only the value two is returned. And this value corresponds to the number of NAN values in the column x1. It's also possible to count the number of NAN values by the rows in our data frame. And for this, we can use the syntax that you can see in the fifth code box. So in this line of code, I'm once again using the sum function. However, this time I'm specifying within the sum function the axis argument to be equal to one. And then I'm also using the isNull function. And as in the previous examples, I'm using the print function to print the output of this code below the code box. So after running this line of code, you can see that another output is shown. And this output shows the NAN values by the rows in our data set. So in the first row with the index value zero, no NAN values are contained, as you can also see by going back to our example data frame. However, in the second row with the index value one, two NAN values are appearing. And then in the third row, zero NAN values are appearing. In the fourth row, also zero NAN values are appearing. And then in the Fifth row, one NAN value is appearing, as you can see in our data set. And in the last row, no NAN values are appearing. So in this example, I have explained how to count NAN values by the rows in a data set. However, it's also possible to count the NAN values in only one row of our data set. And for this, we also need to apply the log attribute, as you can see in this line of code. And then we are applying to the output of this, the isNA, the sum, and once again, the sum function. So after running this line of code, the value one is returned, which is showing the number of NAN values in the row with the index position four. So in this case, the value one. And if you go back to our data frame, you can see that in this line, only one NAN value is appearing. Yeah, and then in the last example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to count the NAN values in the entire data frame. And we can do that by applying the isNA 
the sum and once again the sum functions to our data frame. So after running this line of code, the value 3 is returned, which is the count of NAN values in all the data cells in our data frame. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.